Everybody, it's Joe and Angel. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday where we take time and answer questions people have sent in and emailed in and mailed in and actually called in. So we look through them. We try to pick out the ones we think are the most common things that people are dealing with today. And so we picked a good list today. So, Angel, we say we jump in. Okay. Uh, now, this particular question just talks about a certain time of year, Christmas, but you can really relate it to anything, birthdays, any kind of celebration, Okay. So my spouse and I had two very different Christmas experiences as children. My family never celebrated Christmas with presents and a tree. Interesting. My husband grew up getting everything his heart desired for Christmas and having a Christmas tree every year. Please know that I'm not complaining. My husband gives me such an overwhelming amount of gifts for Christmas. But when we become parents, how do we balance teaching our children to celebrate Jesus's birth on Christmas Day and not to make it all about the presents? Well, I've been on both ends of this. I remember when I first got uh, born again, spirit filled and uh, been working in the wire industry for 12 years, I quit my job, came to Bible school. So uh, we're working three minimum wage jobs, went to Bible school. And so one of the owners and one of the companies about us to a Christmas party. So uh, I, I had two new kids. I'm a new Christian. And I'm just real strong. So I don't have a Christmas tree. And people that said, uh, uh, who, who's that Santa Claus guy? I said, well, that's St. Nicholas. You know, he was a great missionary, you know, shared Jesus, <laughs> and, you know, and so, uh, 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 and so my kids, someone, who is that? Now? Well, honey, it's father Abraham. He's got the beard and the dinging bell. That's father Abraham. And so we, <laughs> we go to a Christmas party and uh, at the end of the party, the owner had given every child a big mug, a Santa Claus mug, Santa space on it, you know? So, <laughs> so my oldest daughter opened hers quick. She was the first one and she, and she got really excited. Look, Dad, it's a Father Abraham mug. And the owner kind of looked and said, I didn't know you were Jewish. I thought, well, I'll explain later. So on the way home, I had to <laughs> repent. I said, I'm sorry. I've gone the wrong direction. You know, uh, there was a St. Nicholas, a Santa Claus. So tell the truth. So I went from having no tree to a big tree that was loaded up every year. I'm going to hang all kinds of stuff on it. We're going to put the Christmas lights up. And we were down in the country. My son would hang lights. I don't know how many lights I bought. So. We would light the thing up. We didn't leave Jesus. We didn't deny Jesus. We just celebrated the holiday. And people said, well, you're not a tree. That's a symbol of paganism. I said, God made trees. Do you understand it? It's a, it's a God thing. I love trees. I grew up in East Tennessee. I love trees. And so we're going to decorate the tree, you know, and uh, we're going to do it every year. So it doesn't bother me. So um, what you need to do for the gifts thing, we tell our kids, uh, because we had a big family, uh, Ancient, I kind of grip a little different on that. I said, everybody gets one gift. You get, you're going to draw a name from your brother, sister, and who's ever you, you're responsible to get them one gift. I'm going to be a gift. Set your price and, and can't spend more than this, but everybody gets a gift. And then I, mom, and I'll give you one thing. You have something real nice. We have a great dinner and a great time. We're going to go for a hayride and have a nice time. So you're just going to set your own standard. There's no right or wrong, good or bad, to set your own standard. So we've got family that we love. And uh, the, one of the family members, the kids must get 28 things. I mean, you got they get tired of opening gifts. They get tired of opening gifts. There's so many, and they're so good. It's like, hey, I'm too busy playing with this, and I don't have time to open that other stuff up. And so you can take over and share your story on that. Well, I mean, everybody has different, you know, my mom was like the Griswolds. I mean, they had, we had lights everywhere and it was just Christmas, Christmas, the Christmas dishes, the Christmas, this, the Christmas, that. So when I got married, I didn't care. I was just like, <laughs> my cup is full. Yeah. And so it was like, I was living in Spokane, Washington, and uh, we would come home for Christmas once a year. And so I was like, I'm not going to put up a tree just to. Uh, have to, you have to bring it down and I'm not going to be here. So I put a bow on the back of a chair and I call <laughs> it the Christmas chair. <laughs> and so, but I think that, uh, you know, I mean, I think you need to come together as a couple with, uh, for your children, yeah. but you know, if you, if you're putting the word in your children on a daily basis, it's not a once a year thing. Nope. And, uh, and we, we want to celebrate Jesus every day of our lives, not that one day. Yeah, that's it. The, and, this uh, is not the whole day. You know, Jesus <laughs> was not born on December the 25th. He's born somewhere in the spring. So there's so many people that try to attack the custom of Christmas. I love celebrating Jesus' birth. 
Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's the 25th, the 23rd, or the 18th. Doesn't matter to me. We have a day we set aside in our government to celebrate the birth of Jesus. So let's celebrate it. You know, eat some, eat a fried chicken, buy some turkey, you know, have some ham, uh, get some candy. <laughs> Take a long nap. There's no sin and the in it. Presents are fun. Now, now that my kids are older, I just have a budget, and this is what you get. You can tell what you want. And if it fits in that budget, fine. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> There you go. Okay, so there are times when family members ask me for advice. Sometimes when I share my advice, they do the exact opposite, and they don't talk to me about the matter any further. Now, I struggle giving advice in fear of losing the people in my life that might not want to hear what I have to say. How do you give advice and not lose the people you love? I just want to help. You tell the truth. Don't tell them anything unless they ask a question. Now, we learned the hard way. Uh, you're fresh. Uh, like I said, I spent 12 years in the industry, electrical industry. And so we're in the Bible school. We go home and visit. We drove our family nuts because we're in a Bible school. And, man, it's a great Bible school. And we're witnessing to everybody and their dog, their cat, trying to be <laughs> saved at the Christmas party. And people stopped inviting us. They didn't send us any Christmas cards. They're like, what happened? Well, we've offended everybody in our home. So we had to flip the thing. That took two or three years. We flipped it. And so... We go on Christmas. We're not going to share nothing about Jesus. We're going to take some food and wash some dishes and do some laundry, maybe mow the grass, uh, stack some towels, you know, mop a floor. We're going to serve. <clears throat> and eventually, if you serve them, they'll ask you about the hope that's in you. So don't go and talk about yourself. Don't talk, just go in there and be a blessing to somebody. Leave them better than you find them. That's what Jesus did. Jesus, the Apostle Paul, left everybody better than they found them. So make them want to invite you. Come in and celebrate, whatever. So and give you advice. Give you, uh, advice. you don't want you don't want, when somebody's thirsty. You don't want to stick a fire hose in their mouth and crank no. it on. Oh, and listen, only answer the question that they've asked. Don't answer twenty-seven questions and keep it short. That's so good, Angel. We had to learn how to keep it short. Well, what do you think about this? Because they're 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 wondering. They know we're in Bible school. What do you think about this? And I keep it short. Well, I don't think this. Just get real quiet. And I said, well, well, what else about this? I said, what, well, what about this? And I'd share some and I'd be quiet. Yeah, but what about this? And the questions would start coming like just ping pong balls dropping out of a ceiling. Boom, 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 boom. Because you're not offending them. You're just trying to answer a question. And they may not like the answer. I said, well, this is based on the word of God. And if you find different scripture, I'd appreciate you sharing that with me. You know, I'm not perfect. Maybe I know it. Maybe I've heard it wrong. Maybe, maybe I don't know everything, but this is what I know. So I'll answer that. So don't try to over answer any question. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, Joe, my child has been told they come across as holier than thou. As if they think they're better than the next person. He is less likely to be invited to casual events because he gives off a judgmental vibe. How do I help him through this personality quirk? Yeah, you know, if every show, every show, Dennis the Menace, uh, Leave It to Beaver, if you go through, every show has that one person in there. Yep. That's going to tattle on the teacher. That's going to tell you, tell on you if you've been doing wrong, that is perfect and blah, 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 blah. Well, uh, now this is going to get a little ugly. First of all, that child learned that from somebody. Ooh. The apple kind of falls straight down out of the tree. <laughs> now, we had an apple orchard up in the country. Where's the apples? Well, they're under the tree. It fell straight down. So they didn't invent that on their own. The attitude, the conversation, they've heard it from somebody in the house. And so uh, the great thing about becoming a parent was having kids. You realize that I used to yell at my wife. I said, I don't say that, do I? You say it all the time. Do I do that? You do it all the time. I was like, holy biscuit. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm creating a, a horde of horrible stuff. And so every day I learned to try to change a little bit. You know, kids are a great mirror back to what you're doing and saying like, man, we don't need to say that anymore. We don't need to do that anymore. Well, plus I think, uh, you know, now that we have a generation of entitled people, <laughs> oh. uh, because we have told our kids, your feelings matter. That's right. Your, uh, when do I you're get a perfect. Turn? Everybody deserves a trophy. Everybody's a winner. Yeah, and we that, all got trophies. And that's not true in life. Nope. <laughs> and so, um, so it's, um, you know, it's a difficult, difficult thing to have. I remember trying to, you know, when I became a single mother, 
I can tell you out of honesty, my children were probably headed that way. But then I became a single mother and the real world <laughs> slapped us in the face. <clears throat> it's not funny, but it's very entertaining. <laughs> it was, it's entertaining now. It was horrible at the time. Woo. And um, so. Um, but in, in the long story <laughs> short, her kids are magnificent. They're not perfect. But they're real close. She's got great kids whose <laughs> hearts are always for other people. Well, thank you. But but uh, so we had to do a turn. And, you know, it's interesting. Uh, we went back to that house that we lived in. It was a big house and everything. And my son says something interesting. He said, you know, I think I'm a better person because of that, that divorce. And Whoa. Uh, but I remember struggling. I remember having to struggle as a single mother to put them through private school because I felt like that was so important. And then to struggle to put food on the table. Pay yeah. a bill, and keep a car. Yeah, I had to start a new career at at uh, forty yeah. years old, and and uh, then had to, uh, you know, I can remember saying to my kids, "I I can't do that. I can't help you with that. You're going to have to figure something out." And uh, you get to start believing God for yourself. And then that, then they had to get jobs when they were young <laughs> and fifteen, you know, and they they'll take. My son worked at Sam's his first job, and he would push the carts in, you know. To this day, if you go with him, he's 30 now, <laughs> to any place that has carts, Woo! he will push all of them in because he says, why, how, why do they have to pay somebody to do something somebody should just do simply out of courtesy? He's going to return that cart every time, every time. And anyone, other ones he finds. So um, it, it uh, you know, there's times that you just have to, to say no to your child. You're not perfect. Now, that is, that's not cute when you do that that's you know and uh, you have to help build a character in them that's yeah. part of your job so if your ch- child is walking around being a little a jerk turd i was going to say turd <laughs> i'm in, i'm from the south then 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 uh, then you need to probably readjust some of your uh parenting skills because they'll take that into adulthood yeah, and, the, and they did, will marry somebody like that. Like kind draws like kind. And it'll be it'll be even oh, more oh, even more difficult. It'll get nasty. So that, yeah. So so pray about it. Then then tell them tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. Truth sets you free. I remember one time my son was in college and I said, he said, Can you help me pay this bill? And I said, Son, you're an adult now. I owe no man anything but to love him. I will always love you, but I can't keep paying your bills. I can't. You're going to have to take care of this revelation. <laughs> it, was the, it was the best revelation I did for him. Yeah. And so uh, both of his parents have been through that where we realized, I think, I think it's time. Uh, you know, we, 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 we had dogs for years and we'd have, they'd have puppies. But I remember every time the milk would dry up, there'd be always some pup in that kennel down there. would be squalling all out long. And the kids say, yeah, what's wrong with that pup? So, well, the milk's dried up at mom and he needs to eat meat now. But he didn't want any meat. He wants that warm milk. But there is no more milk. So he still got teeth. So he tried to last down on mama's nipple and that killer. And boy, mama would bite him. And you'd hear him scream, but dad, what's wrong? Oh, give him a couple of days. He'll get hungry enough. He'll eat that meat. <laughs> you get hungry enough. You'll do what you need to do. Exactly. Woo. Exactly. So, uh, well, we sure love you guys. We so enjoy our time with you. Uh, please share this with your friends yes. and send us your comments and your questions. And yes. we will see you next time. We live in the greatest day of human history, people. Don't ever forget that. God's moving like a freight train. I don't care what you see on the news. God does not have a TV channel. God does with people one-on-one. He's real good, guys. <laughs> we love you. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family. And we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.